Good morning. It's wonderful to see you all here on this third Sunday of Advent. If you please stand if you're able and join me in the call to worship. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Shout aloud and sing for joy. God is with us. The Lord is near. Please remain standing for our opening hymn. It's Angels We Have Heard on High, number 238. Now let's read the World Methodist Social Affirmation on page 886. Please join me in the words in bold, in reading the words in bold. We believe in God, creator of the world and of all people, and in Jesus Christ, incarnate among us, who died and rose again, and in the Holy Spirit, present with us to guide, strengthen, and comfort. We believe. God, help our unbelief. We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom, in the upholding of human dignity and community, 
in every expression of love, justice, and reconciliation, in each act of self-giving on behalf of others, in the abundance of God's gifts, entrusted to us that all may have enough, in all responsible use of the earth's resources. Glory be to God on high and on earth, peace. We confess our sin, individual and collective, by silence or action, through the violation of human dignity based on race, class, age, sex, nation, or faith, through the exploitation of people because of greed and indifference, through the misuse of power in personal, communal, national, and international life, through the search for security by those military and economic forces that threaten human existence, through the abuse of technology which endangers the earth and all life upon it. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We commit ourselves individually and as a community to the way of Christ, to take up the cross, to seek abundant life for all humanity, to struggle for peace with justice and freedom, to risk ourselves in faith, hope, and love, praying that God's kingdom may come. The kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. I walked in this morning and I hadn't yet seen the sanctuary with the poinsettias all around and it, it took my breath away. I, I won't lie, it is so beautiful in the sanctuary today and I'm so grateful for all of those who have put in the effort and the work to help the sanctuary become so beautiful. Um, and also for all of those who have donated in honor or in memory um, of loved ones for the poinsettias. You'll see in the bulletin there's a list of all of those who have been dedicated. Um, and we're grateful for your, your gifts so that we can continue to keep our sanctuary beautiful and to make it more beautiful even as the season goes on. So thank you all for that. If you are worshiping with us today for the first time, we are especially glad that you are here with us today. You'll see in the pews a connect card. We'd love for you to fill that out and put it in the offering plate later in the service. Or if you prefer on the back of the bulletin, there's a QR code that you can just scan with your phone, fill that out. That way we can get to know you a little bit more um, and tell you a little bit more about us. Um, this is a wonderful congregation that is loving and active. Um, and I'm so grateful for this season. I'm grateful for this community. Um, and for the ways that we love our neighbors here in Grant Park during Advent and all throughout the year. Uh, we have a great worship service in store for you on this third Sunday of Advent, Sunday, when we celebrate joy. And I am going to invite Robin South to come forward uh, to light our Advent wreath this morning. We light this candle as a symbol of the joy to be found in your kingdom on earth. For the Lord elevates the lowly, releases the captive, brings sight to the blind. We rejoice in this justice and mercy, mercy faithful to all generations. And the people said, come, Lord Jesus, come. Now, if you'll please rise again in body or spirit and join me in today's gospel, in reading today's gospel lesson, it's Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 55. Now hear these words. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her, leapt in her womb. 
And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will, come, will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated, and if our children would like to come up to see Miss Annie. Okay, now we can start. I just wanted to make you wait a little bit because it's Advent, so we're celebrating that we get to wait for Jesus. Okay, I have a question for all of you, and as many answers as want to be answered can be answered. So, what is your favorite Christmas song? I'll, I'll bring the mic around. I'll bring the mic around. La 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 la. <laughs> Jingle bells. All I want for Christmas. Oh, I just listened to that one this morning in my car on the way here, so it's definitely a good one. I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. What? I want a hippopotamus. Anybody else? Okay, well, you, it's okay, you already went. Okay, so did you know, well, first of all, before I even ask the did you know, what is the name of Jesus' mom? How about Maeve? Mary, right? You're playing Mary this year, right? So, did you know that Mary actually wrote a song for Jesus? You did know that? I'm going to read it to you because it's pretty cool. And we just listened to it in one version of the Bible, but I'm going to read it to you from a different version of the Bible that I really like. Oh, no. Okay, so listen. And you can make any reactions, like thumbs up, anything you need to do while I'm reading this. All right. Mary said, I am bursting with God news. I'm dancing the song of my Savior God. God took one good look at me, and look what happened. I am the most fortunate woman on earth. What God has done for me will never be forgotten. The God whose very name is holy, set apart from all others, God's mercy flows in wave after wave on those who are in awe before God. He bared his arm and showed his strength, scattered the bluffing braggarts. He knocked tyrants off their high horses, pulled victims out of the mud. The starving poor sat down to a banquet. The rich were left out in the cold. He embraced his chosen child, Israel. He remembered and piled the mercies, piled them high. It's exactly what he promised, beginning with Abram and right up to now, Abraham. Okay, so Mary wrote that song, right? And she wrote it to say, thank you, God, for all the good things you did for me. So can we think of some good things that God has done for us? Yeah. Gave us houses and food. Gave us houses and food. Gave us video games. Gave us video games. George, has there been a new exciting thing in your house this week? 
No, nothing new happened in George's house. It's okay. Baby brother, not a, not a big deal. All right. So, God made us and gave us life. He gave us our parents and this earth, and he sent Jesus to teach us. And these are all good things that God did for us. And that is why Mary wrote a song. And that is why we sing our Christmas songs. We sing to say thank you to God. So let's pray together. Ready? Pray. God, we thank you for loving us and for always doing good things for us. This Christmas, we especially thank you for sending Jesus to us. In his name we pray. Amen. children make their way up to children's church let's rise again as you're able and sing together there's a song in the air number 249 in the red hymnal Be seated. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. And you all just did that. So well done. You're already on track to be, you know, an expert elf this season. But who doesn't love music this time of the year, right? Isn't this the best time of the year for songs and music and carols? I mean, there was even talk of people who started listening to Christmas songs at the beginning of October. <laughs> yep, we got a hand up over there. So that's actually who I was thinking of when I thought about that. But I mean, really, who can blame them, right? I mean, you can listen to Christmas music whenever you want. You do you if it brings you joy that you need. But Christmas music is really just the best. 
I'm really excited about the choir concert later today. It's at five o'clock here in the sanctuary. And so I hope that you will all come to hear the Christmas music and to really get into the spirit of the season. And who knows, they might, they might just sing one of your favorite Christmas carols. You never know. But let's, let's kind of get an idea of what your favorite carols are, all right? Who's, whose favorite is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel? Anybody? All right, we got one. Uh, how about the first Noel? All right, there's one. I'm not naming your favorites. I'm not getting many hands. Uh, Away in a Manger? All right, one. I think that might have been a pity hand raise. Uh, Silent Night? There we go. There we go. All right, well, let's, are there any other carols, like sacred songs? You can just shout them out if that's one that you like during this season. Oh, Holy Night. Oh, Holy Night. That's one of my favorites, too. What child is this? Yeah, anybody else? Okay, that's all right. You don't have to participate. Uh, well, let's go into the secular, though, all right? Who loves Jingle Bells? Yeah, we got a lot of, we got more hands for Jingle Bells than we did for O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. That's okay. Uh, how about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? Yeah? Do you sing it with all the little additions to it? Yeah? Uh, 12 Days of Christmas. Yeah, good. I'm glad that's nobody's favorite. <laughs> Uh, how about All I Want for Christmas is You? <laughs> More hands than I expected. There are admittedly a lot of Christmas songs, both sacred and secular, that we really love, that give us these warm feelings of hope and joy. But let's be honest, there are also a lot of really bad Christmas songs too, right? Yeah, I was thinking about having you guys call out the songs that you don't like, but then I remembered that people have strong feelings about songs, and I didn't want to start any arguments or fights in the midst of our worship service. But some of them are just plain strange, right? I mean, Grandma got run over by a reindeer? Like, that's just weird, right? Or, you know, I want a hippopotamus for Christmas? Or all I want for Christmas are my two front teeth? I mean, these are just some strange songs. One of our favorites in my household that we sing every year but is completely absurd, is called Puppies Are Forever by Sia. I don't know if you've ever heard this song, but it says puppies are forever, not just for Christmas. And it's a whole song about when you get a puppy for Christmas that you need to you know, keep the dog forever and not just have it as a puppy. Anyway, it's, it's a ridiculous song, and we sing it often in the Rapco house. But as with so many things in life, Music isn't just about the recognition, about the warm feelings that we have. Really, music, it elicits powerful and deep emotions and memories for us. When certain songs start to play, like, you know, as Bill mentioned, Oh Holy Night, I have trouble holding back my tears because the song is so powerful and so emotional for me. And I'm sure that you all have songs like that as well. Songs whose lyrics move you or bring up memories that you just can't let go of. Music, as we know, is powerful and important, and especially this time of year, can bring up all of the feels, right? Christmas music especially can bring up those emotions within us. And so, I am missing a page of my sermon. That's awesome. <laughs> and so we use these, these songs to not only bring up emotions, to bring up joy and love, but music all throughout the centuries have also been used to bring about change in the world. Am I right? Like to bring about some strong revolutions, if you will. I think, um, especially if I think about fiction books, one of the stories that comes to my mind is The Hunger Games. Anybody here read all The Hunger Games books? Yeah? Somebody did and is very excited about it. Um, but in The Hunger Games, there's a song that they sing, and once the whole nation hears it, they use it as a, as a rallying cry to get everybody to stand up and to form a revolution. The same is true about Les Miserables. They sing, when you hear the people sing. Do you guys know what I'm talking, that song? 
And it's sort of the rallying cry for the French Revolution, at least in the play. But this isn't the only place that we see these things, right? We don't just see songs of revolutions in plays and in fiction books. I mean, if we think back to the time of slavery, enslaved persons sang songs like Follow the Drinking Gourd and Go Down Moses. These were songs to help them to find their way to freedom. Or when we look at the civil rights and we have um, Lift Every Voice and Sing, these are songs of rallying. Or even during the Vietnam War, when they would sing songs like Blowing in the Wind, people would write songs about revolution, about changing the world. Well, friends, this is exactly what we hear in our scripture passage for today. Mary sings a song. But first, before she sings that song, she, with haste, makes her way to the home of her cousin, Elizabeth. She goes there with, you know, with haste, as the scripture passage says, for probably many different reasons. One, because the angel had just told her, a young, unwed mother, that she was going to have a baby, and he was going to be the savior of the world. And so she goes hurriedly to see her cousin to say, I heard you also had an angel. Oh my gosh, what is going on? Can we just talk about this together? She might go there to hear about what to expect in her pregnancy, you know, about the morning sickness and the aches and the swollen ankles. And also she might have a little bit of jealousy that Elizabeth, a married woman, is allowed to, you know, show these aches and pains publicly while Mary is still living under the stigma of being young and unmarried at the time when it's a little bit harder to share not only the joy of a pregnancy, but also all of the things that come with it. And as we all know, there are lots of things that come with pregnancy. But as soon as she walks in to see Elizabeth, as soon as she comes in the door, the baby within Elizabeth leaps in her womb. And they use this as a signal that this baby that Mary is carrying will be the savior of the world. That the promise that the angel gave her was in fact true. That it was going to happen and that nothing would be the same after that. But whatever Mary's reasons for swiftly making it there, all of these different options, Elizabeth already knows about Mary's news. And we know this because of the baby leaping in her womb. And the child leaping within Elizabeth is not, a sign, is not just a sign that the child Mary was carrying would be great, but that this child would bring about a revolution. That this child that she was carrying would change the world. He came as a promise. A promise not only that God is with us, but that God is with us and ready to make some changes on the earth. And so by the time that Mary gets to Elizabeth's house, she has begun to consider for herself what this baby will mean, not just for her own life and the complications that that will bring, but what it will mean for everybody else on earth. The prospects were thrilling. When Elizabeth declared to Mary that she was blessed among all women for being chosen to give birth to the Lord, Mary couldn't contain herself. You see, most of us have gotten so comfortable with Christmas. It's a cycle that we go through every year that we have really taken for granted the radical nature of what happens during Christmas, what happens on Christmas Day the extreme radical nature of God coming to earth as a baby in order to change the world. But Elizabeth knew it, and Mary knew it, and of all things, it made Mary sing. And the song that follows is famously referred to as the Magnificat. It is beautiful and powerful 
It is life-changing. With it, Mary stops the action of the entire gospel and expresses how God is sovereign in the world and displays that greatness by displacing the proud and the powerful, by sending away the rich empty-handed. Really, this song shows us who Mary really is. Too often, we think about Mary as being meek and mild, as being timid, I mean, she is usually portrayed as a pleasant and compliant figure rather than a defiant one, right? Meek and mild, humble and quiet, that's the Mary of Christmas pageants and Hollywood movies. Not often are we provided a glimpse of the Mary who has a vision of a revolutionary war world sparkling in her eyes and a passion for justice throbbing in her heart. She sings a visionary song of a changed world with the power of a God-inspired protest singer. She belted out the words, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior for he has looked with favor upon the lowliness of his servant. In tones more likely to shake their hearers than to soothe them, she sings about a promised savior, saying that he has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. <sighs> Y'all, Mary's song is powerful. It's about reversals and promises. And the more that Mary sings, the more powerful her song becomes. Because indeed, the fact that Mary sings the Magnificat is itself odd and subversive. This young, unwed, pregnant woman, a thoroughly marginal person in her culture, proclaims one of the most prophetic words in all of scripture, the words that will change everything. The images are extraordinary. In fact, they're kind of even comical because young pregnant Mary sings, a, she gives voice to the song of the ages, a song that invites us beyond our realistic expectations and our numb imaginations, which is why when we gather to celebrate the baby, to celebrate Jesus Christ, this miraculous birth, when we gather to share the story of Christmas, it's important to realize that this story, it's more than just animals in a barn. It's more than just angels singing or shepherds coming. It's more than just a star in the sky. Rather, the Christmas story, what all of this preparation is leading up to is about turning the world on its head. It's about turning the world upside down. This is not a placid and harmless event, but rather it's an event that made people nervous during the time because Jesus was coming to bring a revolution, to turn everything in a way that was countercultural. And so Mary uses music to make this point. She reminds us that music has power. And she reminds us that the best way of sharing this news is singing loud for all to hear. Because as we know from Buddy the Elf, from the movie Elf, the best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. Now, sometimes when we sing our song, it's subtle. But sometimes our song is extraordinary. There's a story of protesters who used song in Germany in 1989. Now, for several months preceding the fall of the Berlin Wall, the citizens of this town would gather on Monday evenings by candlelight around St. Nikolai Church. This was the same church where Bach had composed many of his cantatas. And the crowds would gather and they would sing. 
And over two months' time, their numbers grew from a little more than 1,000 people, which is still a lot of people, but it grew from a little more than 1,000 people to 300,000. Over half the citizens of the city came to sing around this church, singing songs of protest and judgment until their song shook the powers of their nation and changed the world. Later, someone asked one of the officers of the East German secret police why they didn't crush this protest like they had so many other protests during the time. And the officer said, we had no contingency plan for a song. Music is powerful. Music changes the world. And so friends, we sing. But my question for you today is what is your song? What are you singing? Because we can sing the song that we hear in the world every day, more of the same, songs of impression, songs of injustice. We see all around us practices and laws and customs that you know, would raise the powerful and the wealthy above everyone else and ignore those on the margins. But friends, we have an unwed young woman singing the most beautiful song, a song that changed the world forever, a protest song about the low being brought high and the rich being sent away empty. And if you doubt that these words, that these songs really are powerful and radical, when was the last time you paid attention to the lyrics of some of the carols that we sing right here in this building? I mean, one of the songs is, O come, thou day spring, come and cheer, our spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadows are put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. Or one of my real favorites. Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break, for the slave is our brother. And in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy and grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name. Friends, we have gotten used to the Christmas songs. We've gotten used to singing these songs each and every year that sometimes we forget how revolutionary they really are. They are about turning the world on its head. They are about changing things for good so that those who have nothing will be filled, so that those who are on the margins, those who are oppressed, will feel the love of God and be made high. These songs that we sing, they are not harmless carols. They are not things like grandma got run over by a reindeer. They are radical songs of revolution, of justice, and of love. These songs that we sing remind us that Christmas is not just about the warm feelings of a new baby, but the radical truth that this small, defenseless, vulnerable baby is God, come to earth to be with us. And he's here to turn the world upside down. And if that's not enough to get you singing, I don't know what is. So friends, what is your song that you're singing? What messages are you singing about this crazy event called Christmas? Because you know, the best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. Mary did it, and now it's our turn. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Amen.
friends, as we've come to our time of prayer this morning, I want to remind you that we do have a prayer list on the insert in your bulletin. These are names that folks have given us um, so that we can add to that list. And I encourage you to keep that list with you throughout the week so that in your own private prayer time, you can keep those names in mind. And if you have a name that you would like to add to that list, there are multiple ways that you can do that. There are prayer cards in the pews that you can fill out with either a prayer request or a praise report so that we can have joy with you or send comfort and love in times of need. There's also a place on our website that you can go and submit prayer requests. Um, if you would like those to be confidential, um, we can leave them confidential as well. Uh, today, there are a few things that I would like to especially lift up. Um, the community of Mayfield, Kentucky, especially, who has devastating loss um, from the tornadoes over the past few days. Um, Mayfield United Methodist Church uh, was completely destroyed um, in that town. Uh, and we will be posting on Facebook later today um, a way that if you want to give money to UMCOR, which is the United Methodist Committee on Relief, um, that money goes directly to helping folks who are in um, the path of these tornadoes, in the path of, nat path of natural disasters. Um, so if you want to give to that, we will make sure that there is a way to do that. Uh, we also have several new babies that have been born in the last week in our congregation. Um, I want to lift up the Merritt family, Marcus and Karen Merritt. Their grandson, Nico, was born last Sunday, and he and Mama are doing well. Um, and then also the Danis family welcomed baby Lloyd um, into their home on Monday, and family is doing well as well, as far as we know. We good? We're good. Got the thumbs up. Um, but I encourage you to continue to be in prayer uh, for those families as well, because as much of a joy as it is, um, it is also difficult. And so pray for them as they are um, getting used to the new normal of new family members. And now I want to make sure to give all of you the chance to lift up names uh, that, or situations that are on your hearts and minds this day. Um, you will lift those up and we will respond to each petition by saying, Lord, hear our prayer. And then we will pray and then finish together with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Khalil Thompson. Lord, hear our prayer. 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 Mary Ellen McLean Hughes. Lord, hear our prayer. Mighty One, O oh Lord, we magnify your glory. You have done great things for us, showing mercy to your people from generation to generation. Lord, hear the prayers of your people in this time and place this day. Show your strength, O Lord, and scatter the proud. Deliver us from the evil powers of sickness, sorrow, suffering, and sin, so that all may know fullness of life that comes through you. Lord, like Mary, we ask that you would bring down the powerful and lift up the lowly, that you would humble the leaders of nations and give justice to the oppressed, so that all may live in dignity and peace. Lord, fill the hungry with good things and send the rich away empty. Teach us to share our gifts, to reorder our priorities, so that all may seek the common good. Lord, we're grateful for the song that you have given us, the song of hope and peace and joy. And we ask that you would help us to sing that song when we go from this place, so that all may hear of your power and your glory 
of your promise of the love that you give each and every one of us. And so, Mighty One, we give thanks for your grace as you have helped your people from generation to generation. Remember your mercy here and now with all of us gathered. In this we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we come to the time of our tithes and offerings, um, I do want to encourage you that if you have not yet turned in an estimate of giving card for 2022, um, then we encourage you to do that. There are some at both of the entrances to the church. Um, these estimate of giving cards really help us to be able to plan for the next year, um, to see the ministries of the church, and to be able to, to take joy in them and know that we're going to be able to do great things, not just now, but in the future. And so, friends, as I invite our ushers to come forward for the morning offering, what is it that God desires of us? It's not sacrifices, it's not burnt offerings, but to be the living body of Christ and to do the will of the Lord. Therefore, we present ourselves in service to God as a living offering of thanks and praise. Amen.
like to call your attention to a couple of announcements. There's many listed in your bulletin, but wanted to make sure you did hear that Cassie, what Cassie already mentioned, and that's the Christmas concert tonight. If for some reason you have not yet gotten into the holiday spirit, please come tonight, because I guarantee they do it every time. Bring a friend, bring a neighbor. It's always beautiful and amazing. Um, also tonight, Matt Holcomb is going to be selling his lovely barbecue right outside for $10 a plate. So you see the show, go outside, get some wonderful barbecue, and you're set for the evening. Um, and then finally, next Sunday, during the, this morning service, will be the kids' pageant, the kids' Christmas pageant. So I know it's, gonna, <laughs> it's always good. It's always entertaining. They've been working hard. So please um, come and again bring some friends next Sunday for the kids' Christmas pageant. Are there any other announcements anybody would like to point out? Great. Well, then let's uh, stand again as you're able for our closing hymn, and let's sing together. My soul gives glory to my God, number 198. Friends, it is with joy on this third Sunday of Advent that Mary sang a song that changed the world. And we are invited to go and share that song with everyone. What is your song? Sing it loud, because the best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. In the name of the one who creates and redeems and sustains, go in peace. Amen.